Well, I guess we're starting then, aren't we? Thank you for the raid, TD. Thank you very much. Uh, hope you enjoyed your stream. How was your stream, TD? Warm-up guy was amazing. Um, if someone's here who was not watching TD, please do go ahead and follow TD because TD was just doing his first ever stream on twitch and i have to say it seemed seemed to go very well i mean uh yeah yeah thank you for tooting on stream ian it's very very appreciated warm-up guy was definitely solid um bit spam is real the alerts are just turned off so you can continue to drop and everything it's just we won't get annoyed by uh mr noise guy also, I know about the lag today. It's particularly bad, I think. How is everyone doing on this frine? Frine? Oh no. How is everyone doing on this fine Friday night? Thank you for the biddies, uh, Panther. I appreciate it. How is your holiday? Are you enjoying yourself not streaming? Is it not too difficult to let go? let go of streaming and just be the did you change the 44 hertz again on this frying day i did not change the 44 hertz on the frying day but it's the camera that's that's that is what i do know is that it is the camera um because i was able to only replicate the issue with this camera and nothing else um so yeah VS code. VS code. Okay, come on. Open. Um, who is Karen? Who is Karen? If I put my hand in front of my mouth, here's the trick, chat. If you don't show your mouth moving, then no one knows if it's garbage. in sync or not. Karen is garbage? Why would you say such a thing? Um, D G Drayson, welcome in. I have to say, um... Your sunstream was... Ooh, wear a mask. That's a very good point. One moment, please. I declare this stream safe for consumption. No one is at risk of getting COVID or anything from me. <clears throat> also, this is a battle snake mask, which is possibly the best ever merch I have ever received in my entire life. <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> uh, you have a Twitch mask? No, really? Super cool. Uh, no, we're at 48 kilohertz, uh, noob. I just checked. So, but maybe, um, okay, there's a little bit of delay still, but it will be better. Oh, three pack on Amazon. You can buy Twitch branded masks on Amazon. That's a bit weird. This stream is safe. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, look, here's the, uh, Battlesnake logo, right there. Thank you, uh, Panther, for the Battlesnake amazing mask. I have added ventriloquism to my act. Much easier with a mask. Mm-hmm. Indeed, G. Drayson. Not as weird as Amazon branded masks. Ah. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. This is actually a pretty good hack. I like that. So how, um, how is everybody? 
<laughs> Make Amazon great again? Oh no. I actually read it as Amazon, didn't I? But there's a flaw here. I I can't drink. This is so awkward. This is terrible. Why am, why am I doing this chat? I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't even know why I bother to stream with this crappy desync. But I can get rid of it, watch. If I'm small, the, the lag actually gets smaller for whatever reason. And eventually, eventually, it starts to fade. And then now it's actually pretty much in sync. It's crazy. It's just weird. I think... I feel like it's like the camera getting too hot when it's when it's uh, in the big, I don't know, in the big mode. But technically, it's the same resolution. I don't, I don't understand. Who knows about technology chat? <laughs> Who knows? Do you have two cam sources? Nope, just one. One scene, which is then reused. Um, I've actually never shared my OBS setup. The mask must have fooled the camera and to stop lagging. Yeah, yeah, it's like a synchronization thing, you know? But uh, I've never shared my OBS thing, but yeah, um, I guess it feels like... Okay, anyway, so, chat, um, where is where is my thing? Where is the thing? I have it, okay. Check it out. Stream project stuff. Okay, so we are back on the project train. These were... Who wasn't... Okay, first of all. Who... Who wasn't here? Who doesn't know about the project? Because I'm not going to, like, do the project intro thing. If everyone knows about the project. You know what I mean? The first rule of... I know the whole first rule of project is not to talk about the project blah, blah, blah. but if someone's here who doesn't know about the project then just raise your hand make the intro and clip it <laughs> I'll just take it from one of my other vods yeah <laughs> maybe that would actually not be easy and then just you know command project just place the clip or something that's also possible um, we do actually have the project command so this is what the project's about the project's about Stats. Stats are us. Uh, Staty McStats face. The project is about making it easier for streamers to understand what's happening on their stream. Um, it's my first ever project and I have no idea if I'm going to be successful or not. Oops, that's the feet one. Didn't want to do that. I just wanted to take out the camera for a sec. Hold on. <clears throat> So, we'll do without face cam for a second. I, I've been brainstorming with chat. Okay, you've all been extremely helpful over the past... Oh, sorry, dark mode. My bad. Oh, I'm lost now. No. Crap. Okay, here. I went, like, off page. So, the, the hack for Miro in dark mode is, uh, <clears throat> is that you... You just color the background black and then you don't have an issue. So the idea behind the project is to have a real time engine for your stream. Okay, I'll turn the camera back on. Hold on. I don't know if there's still lag. There probably is still lag. Talking of merch, P. Drayson, I bought some more merch for myself yesterday. Hint, hint. Panther, are you peddling your merch in chat? I suppose I peddle my domains in your chat. It's only fair. That makes sense. Success is in trying. Thank you, Yost, and welcome in. Welcome in, Panda. Nice to see you. It's been a very long day for you, if I remember earlier today, you mentioning that it was 5 a.m. for you. I hope that you managed to get some rest in between those, those streams. Um... Yeah, 
Oh, that's good. You've slept in between. Wonderful. No, that's very good. I have a weird sleep schedule. Oh, so you sleep during the day? That's kind of interesting. I wouldn't be able to do that because of the light. That's my main issue. I can't get the room dark enough so I can sleep well. I only sleep really well when it's reasonably dark. Not completely black. Like, not completely dark, but like, just a smidgen little sprinkling. Uh, I usually sleep 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Ooh, that's interesting. Ah, if work allows you. Although, technically, those are outside working hours. Like, traditional working hours. Hmm. Plot twist. It's still 5 a.m. and they're caught in a time loop. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one, Yost. Hey, D3. Welcome in. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Send help. <laughs> oh, this is a fun one. So, yeah, the, I, I'm trying to create a, a, a product for creators um, like myself. I think that's the main the main reason that this project came about is because I want that. Um, actually, we should have a, um, a command for the delay. What activities? Is this a warning? We're in science and tech and this was a nice sciency message. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean is this a warning? Um, oh, early warning indicators. Yeah, so wow. I want to do more. Hey, it's me, Ollie. Thank you for the follow. That's appreciated. Um, and thank you for throwing paper ball at me, Panther. Always appreciated. Um, so, okay, so early warning indicators. We are not talking about just stats, like pure stats, because technically speaking, anybody could do that. It's not as fun. Um, Ollie, you've also found the, the, the option to throw paper ball. That's good. Oh, this lag pisses me off. Give me a second. This is really grinding my gears. If I do the thing I did last time that fixed it. Go to here. Go to this. Change that. To... Oh, I need to... Hold on. I need to disable one thing first. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't you want to add a command for the delay? Yeah, I did want to do that. Now I forgot. I forgot myself. Uh, which is the one? That? Make I always change to the the MacBook camera, but that's that's <laughs> that's another level of nastiness. I think what we can do is degrade degrade the actual hmm no I did that last time maybe buffering hmm. we're just gonna have to live with it oh and now I broke it awesome great I break everything did I break it oh no it's not broken okay uh, okay. I will have to live with this being this way. Okay, so... I will add a command for the delay after the stream. I'm too busy right now. So anyone could go and build a product for Twitch. Hey, Ollie, nice one. 96.38, that's a really good score. Good land. Um, so anyone could do that. Anyone could, you know, connect to the Twitch API and then just show you stuff from your last stream. Or even from the current stream, in theory. You could, you know, you could go to, to a lot of different websites and check your stats as well. You can go to Twitch's own uh API, what is it called? Uh, not API, the, the Twitch stats thing, Twitch analytics, you know, for your channel. 
and it will show you stuff from your last streams. Um, by the way, I'm answering, sorry, it was um, Panda, yeah. Panda asked about what these activities are, like what these early, early warning indicators are. So um, anyone could do that. What they can't do is use my analytical prowess, whatever you want to call it, um, to apply kind of logic to the data that we're seeing and collecting in real time. And from that, derive interesting things. For example, we had a lovely raid from TD at the beginning of this stream. Now, I don't know. My viewer count at the moment is around 15. I don't know if all of the viewers from that raid are still here. I don't even know how many of them chatted in my stream. So for example, we could have a piece of information telling us, hey, 80% of the viewers from the raid from six minutes ago are no longer watching your stream. And that would tell me, that would tell me something. It's telling me a lot more than just you got a raid. So that's the kind of thing that we would have. And basically we outlined three possible features. Prowess, yeah. <laughs> I just said bro I don't know like there's probably a better word for it competence if you will so a health indicator which could be derived from various different things like what percentage of your chat has actually written a message in the last X minutes um, average time in the channel for a viewer is over the total stream time I don't know all this kind of stuff uh, Panda's asking, do you get a viewer list with the raid event sub? So specifically in the raid event, I believe you just know from the timing that someone came in from the raid. I'd have to check in detail. We'll go into the technical part in a second. It, it is science and tech after all. We're not just going to stay in Miro all day, you know, or just chat and not show any code. <clears throat> TD. How are your fish and chips, by the way, TD? Did you manage to finish them? First stream in science and tech and doesn't show any code on stream. You should probably delete the VOD. You should probably delete delete the VOD. So yeah, um, major contributing activities that would be like the raid, for example. So um, for example, there would be a if there is a raid, there would be maybe a module that comes out that shows you, hey, uh, this this particular raid was the most beneficial for your stream until now. Um, Maddie, you are so particular. <laughs> what a maverick. It's just going to be an assumption based on the timing. Like if a viewer comes in at the same time of the raid, it's considered part of the raid. Yeah, absolutely. I have to check that for sure. Um, Panda, that's a very good point because we need to make sure that we know that they actually came from the raid, but I believe it's possible to know. Similarly, if a viewer was already in the channel before the raid, they're not considered part of the raid. Yes. Don't do overlays on stream. Delete the VOD. <laughs> it's a bit savage. No, TD, I enjoyed your stream. I wish it was longer. You could have kept on streaming. There's nothing stopping you. I, I don't care if people are watching you rather than me. I'm just doing my thing. I'm going through this because uh, some good questions here. I mean, Panda's, Panda's got some really nice... Uh, Really nice insights. I really appreciate that. And and the other thing could also be like key users. So this is something that I haven't found a single, single Twitch product. Neither Twitch's own analytics, neither any of the websites. And if you find one that does this, please let me know. Um, you can, you know, DM, whisper me on Twitch, or you can find me on, on, on Discord actually as well. Um, there isn't a single product that highlights users that do a lot of, or bring a lot of value to your channel, besides just watch time. Like everyone who's there, everyone who's there um, doesn't, it doesn't tell you, like, I don't know how to put this. Like everyone who's watching is by default they're watching. So everybody's watch time is kind of an equivalent metric. You know what I mean? Twitch API won't tell you about where people are joining from. 
Oh, darn. That's not very good. We'll have to look into that. I'm hoping that I can find through the exact timestamp in milliseconds. If it's actually milliseconds, then it's going to be very unlikely that if a user had the same millisecond timestamp as all the other raid viewers that they didn't come in with the raid. Maybe. We can just derive it from that, maybe. Maddie, you need a claw team message on the timer, but I know you don't do stream setup on stream. <laughs> not really, no. Um, it's not all about you, Panther. It's true. Sometimes it's about TD, sometimes it's about me. Sometimes it's just about the universe. All right, so text, text stuff, text stuff. Okay. We have to basically ping. We have to like, let's, let's do it like this. Get data every X seconds and listen to event sub. So not everything is in event sub. That's the reality. A lot of the stuff isn't in event sub. So for some things, we're going to need to go get information from the channel or from, from the endpoint. Um, every X seconds at some kind of interval, which, which could be an issue uh, for API limits, something we'll have to figure out. But seeing as the product is going to be single user, so it's basically me accessing my data on stream, might not be such a big deal. Yasmin, welcome in. Nice to see you. I hope you're doing well. I haven't seen um, I haven't seen you stream recently. Is that possible? Is that possible? Anyhow, so we have to get data. However, we get it. We want to get basically as much as we can, as frequently as we can, without surpassing the API limits. Normally, for one user listening to just their data, probably won't hit the API limit, but it's something we have to figure out. We're going to store that data in a DB, and then we're going to do the analytics stuff. That's, you know, my, 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 you know, my, like, my thing. Yes, do drop if you'd like to drop. If you want the drop game. I think Surly Dev left all his uh, bots in here from last time, actually. I can still see them in the uh, in the chat thing, Majiggy. Like Jeff's hat stand and all those kind of people. <laughs> Good land, Ian. Good land. I haven't streamed. I've been building, setting up my PC. Ooh. That's cool. Yes, I mean, I actually would love to see a stream of you building the PC. To be honest, uh, my prowess. <laughs> yes, this is the uh, the uh, square of prowess, even though it's flipped on its side, so it looks like a diamond. It's actually a square. And then we have to output to the browser. That's the whole front end part for which I will most definitely need probably help from significant amount of people in the team, because although I know how to write HTML, I know nothing about connecting kind of the front end and the back end. Like this, this, in, this, the, the in-between bit, I know nothing about this. I have no idea how to do that. So I just know console log, which is not really gonna help <laughs> for, for making something look nice. Like the only thing I can do is something like this, okay? This is what I can do. This is just HTML. This isn't getting data from back end or something like that. So that's, that's fine anyway. So <laughs> the scissor of backend and, and frontend, yeah. It's just a web server. I know, but if you've never done it before, you know. Console log is a very good tool to know you're one step ahead of who, of what? One step ahead of what? <laughs> I appreciate the support, thank you. We'll figure it out. So this is kind of the framework, okay? The idea is that it's one Docker container you set it up once and you run the Docker container, you run through the setup. It's a nice guided setup window and then boom, it's done. That's it. Technology. Let's talk about data sources. We want to get everything possible. Oh my gosh, Verola. 
Corolla, you've managed to catch it. One step ahead of the universe? One step ahead of debug log. I also know console table. Console table? Or is it just table? Table console? Now I'm confused. Verola, I'm so glad that you joined. That's very cool. I'm very happy about that. Um, okay, so data sources. We want, we want everything. Everything. So we want, like, obviously the basic stuff about the stream, you know, the title, etc. Which is fine, because it just tells you, like, what stream you're looking at in the window. But I guess you should know that because you're streaming right now, so... Two, ste two steps ahead of alert. <laughs> I will do. I will do some kind of alert feature in this just to annoy annoy the crap out of people. It's like, you've been inactive for seven minutes. Okay, so, um, the yellow ones here are the ones that probably are going to have to come through TMI. TMI JS. TMI. Um, what's what's uh. Yeah, Twitch's TMI client API endpoint, which is like a listener. That's the the chatters and the viewers and the chat content itself um, with commands and threads and mentions and links and all this kind of stuff. And everything else can come from Tau. Now you're probably asking yourself, what's Tau? Well, Tau, let me, let me get this here. This is Tau, my friends. Tau is a project from Finite Singularity and a few other people like, uh, like Jay Walter who have decided to create a unified Twitch API application. So basically everything, everything from Twitch under one local WebSocket, which is exactly what I needed because I didn't want to write the code for every single one of the Twitch APIs. So Finites was very kind and we spent some time yesterday debugging a few things that I was doing. So previously on, what's the name of this product? Let's go back to the name. We had some name suggestions. Uh, what sounds, what sounds like TV? Yeah previously on stream scorchio so essentially last time got to the point where i could do some stuff with the api but it wasn't like it wasn't useful yet it wasn't in a form where i really understood what i was doing and, and finite really helped me understand so i'm grateful to him very grateful uh thank you for the bit ian chaos bits so you should definitely all try and drop and land And if you're annoyed by uh, if you're annoyed by the delay, then you can just have the foot cam instead. Is that better? Is anyone gonna land? I don't think anyone's gonna land. Oh my gosh, I landed because of the chaos bits. <laughs> Sixty-one eighty-one. Oh, oh, Steffi. Uh oh, Steffi's coming in for the attack. Oh, 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 is it gonna be? Oh, short forty-seven. All right, so Ollie says you get a join message via IRC, but you don't know if they've joined from a raid or not. Data Dev, hello. Welcome in, my friend. Welcome in. Jay Walter, did you drop an ear in the drop game? Okay, so you don't know, but if. Honestly, like if the timestamp is down to the millisecond and you've got suddenly a, a raid event and you've got 13 users who have the exact same join timestamp, you want to tell me those aren't the 13 that came from the raid? If the raid size is 13, like you could probably, you know, you know, like, you know what I mean? So you could probably derive it. The do analytics part the prowess part. So essentially Tau has user meta info, hype train, bits, clips, channel points, moderation, polls, raids, predictions. What Tau doesn't have and what Twitch does not provide is ads. 
which is okay i wanted to have ads in there because i thought it would be interesting to know when pre-rolls were triggered and stuff like that but it's of, of understandably it's quite complicated because only some users are actually seeing the ad because they're entitled like with a subscription they're entitled to you know not see the ad for example but anyway okay so panda says i don't think it's going to be exact to the millisecond but just an assumption you have to communicate to your end users and ollie says yeah you could assume it mm -hmm. yeah so it's something that we'll have to look at and and then we'll know right that's that's basically it so the framework is it looks something like this right um there's tau and tmi running in parallel for the moment i know that finite plans to have tmi's features actually integrated into tau so we won't need to include tmi separately anymore um postgres as the db because i'm very familiar with it and it's lightweight super easy you know all that kind of stuff and then um the app itself and that would run in a docker container and then yeah we would be able to you know speaking of docker let's fire that up is documentation for tau available somewhere yes in the github you should be able to find um everything and tau does have the irc socket running but apparently it's only now for only now for for emotes for certain emotes i believe so almost like you have to analyze that type of data to find out if that may be the case steffi kappa steffi indeed we would have to look at a raid to find out if that is actually the case so we could actually maybe look at today's raid maybe i have an idea okay chat I have, like, I have an idea of how I would like to do this. Nice. Oh, Ian. Oh, ho, ho, Ian. Thank you very much for the 49 bits. That is, wow, that is terrifying. And there will be a severe amount of lag because Docker is still starting up and stuff. Sorry about that. I'll just take my face away. How about that? Now it's gone. All right. So I see lag. Couldn't have made it 50. Huh? <laughs> Steffi, don't don't like lay into Ian for giving 49 bits. I need a stream PC. Actually, Oli, I need to fi figure out why I can't use my secondary computer to stream because NDI is not working between the two of them. Yes, means drop looks promising. Not going to lie. It looks quite good. Let's see what happens. Oh, just short. I'm sorry. So funny story, Ollie. I've been working on, I have a second laptop and I've been working on um, getting the second laptop up and running as a stream laptop. So it would handle the compression and encoding and all that. And then, you know, up the Twitch. The problem is that for some reason, my laptops see each other, like NDI is detected. Um, but there's no image and no sound. And I've tried, I've spent probably upwards of 30, 40 hours on it now. And yeah, I haven't gotten much further. I even um, joined um, Epos Vox's Discord. There's quite a few knowledgeable people there about OBS setups and stuff. And I asked the question and there's a few people who have been trying stuff out and haven't been able to figure out what the, what the issue is. <sighs> um, could you just add audio delay to sync things up? Yes, but when 
the camera comes back to its kind of non-delay mode, then the audio is ahead in a way. But for the moment, we could add delay if it makes it a little easier for you to understand me or watch the stream, then we can add some audio delay. Um, how many milliseconds would you say it's currently delayed? Because I'm not watching my own stream. So do a clap. All right, here we go. That was the clap. <laughs> There's a different tech. Oh, wow. Uh, Ian, you hit a text limit? You were going for 69 <laughs> bits. Um, there's a different text similar to NDI that Sushi Dragon talked about. I need to ask in their Discord. He said it was way better. Well, I don't watch it live. That's the point. I don't have the available resources on my computer. Two seconds. Jesus. Uh, I've used OBS to send custom RTMP to another PC, then combine the two and stream it on Twitch. Hmm. It's also a possibility. I, uh... I actually have that set up. That's the fallback. So I have, um, it will just increase the overall stream delay, but I think I'm okay with that. So let's increase delay. So I don't know, two, 2000 milliseconds. Okay. So 2000 millisecond delay on the audio should, I don't know how, how far away it is now. Let's clap again. You're at 1.08 seconds delay by my stopwatch. Fascinating. So is the audio now <laughs> lagging behind the video? <laughs> is, that, is that how much uh, delay I put in that it's now the other way? Um, Elgato Dufa thing. The issue, the issue with having the Elgato Dufa thingamajiggy is they're expensive for laptops. Like the, the uh, external capture cards for laptops, they're expensive. And, you know, I just make money <laughs> from Twitch. I, I make like enough to cover some snacks, maybe. I don't make any Siri. I don't make any serious money. Do another clap, I'll measure it. Okay. I think it's quite delayed, actually, which is very bad. I know it's very bad. I can also unplug the camera. Uh, there's also the. So fallback fallback is sending the stream via um, RTMP to my other laptop, having VLC in there, and then um, putting VLC up uh, as a source in OBS and then streaming. That's the, that's the fallback C, that's plan C. Plan A was NDI. Plan B is to swap my camera for my DSLR. But I'm waiting, uh, I'm waiting for something next week that I can go pick up so I can put my camera on it because my camera is kind of big. So I assume that will fix the issue. Uh, hey, Intio man. So I don't know I put two seconds delay on the audio that might improve things a little bit. Um, there isn't anything else I can really do. Everything is not running anymore. So that's that's pretty much it. I know that Chrome eats a lot of RAM, but it's this isn't this isn't actually the delay isn't coming from a RAM issue. I have plenty of RAM available, plenty. I've got 64 gigs of RAM on this machine, so not a RAM issue. It's a GPU problem. Audio is a little ahead by around 800. Okay, so we'll we'll go to we'll go down. We'll go down to a thousand because that's in the middle and that should improve things a little bit. I appreciate everyone, by the way, just being so patient with that, because if I was watching a stream, if I was watching a stream where this was happening constantly, I would probably quit. So I'm, I'm really, I'm very, very flattered that people would continue to watch really. That being said, um, so here's here's the background. You're so uptight, Maddie. I just have I just have very high expectations of myself. What can I say, Panther? Like maybe 
Maybe, maybe no one else has so, as high expectations as I do. Breathe into a paper bag. I'm not hyperventilating. <laughs> You're rich in RAM. I, yeah, I'm RAM rich. Just not in, in Twitch money, but that's okay. I don't need Twitch's money. I don't need your money. So, yeah, before we get to the tech part, if you have ideas or anything that you would like to see as part of this, whatever it's called, Staty McStats Face app, if you have any ideas at all, let me know in chat. There's the paper for the bag. Thank you, Panther. It's the most appreciated. That crunch, the crunch sound is also very much paper bag crunch, actually. In a way. <laughs> as if as if the stream delay wasn't bad enough, Ian. As if the stream delay wasn't bad enough, sure. Good redemption. Makes me less uh worried. <sighs> Sorry, I got distracted. I didn't mean to get distracted. Fine. I'll say I'm sorry. No, be sincere. Like this. I'm sorry. 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 Garbage. Sorry. Good, that's the one. <laughs> Thanks, noob. Appreciate it. Do you know what other ones there are? I've added a few others. <laughs> Would you like to see the others that I've added? They're actually pretty hilarious. So I've added this one now. If you didn't want to play them, why'd you come to the party? <laughs> <laughs> ice ice cream um then there's this one <laughs> and just just as a question is there anyone here named michael just like as a as a gag it's like a really common name so there might be someone here named michael and if there is, I have a meme that I can use. But if there isn't, I won't use it now. I'll use it when there's someone actually here named Michael. So if you have ideas, I am the meme. Thank you, Toe. Appreciate it. So if I'm the meme, amazing. Maddie got time for other memes, but not for meme box. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, noob, no. Mm. Do you know how long it takes to add those? It's like literally two minutes. To actually go ahead and implement meme box on my channel will take more than six minutes. But of course, if I get a bit fed up of the project, then I might do a stream where I where I do meme box. I want to implement it. Uh, I want to do meme box. I want to do a stream parrot. Oh wow, Steffi, good land. Oh, here comes Ian. Ooh, ninety eight forty. That's very nice. Hey, Nightlight, welcome in. Welcome in and welcome back. Welcome back. So as I was saying, if you have any ideas for this for this project, okay? If you have things that you think would be cool or interesting, then absolutely let me know. Panda says, what about clustering based on text? Okay, so like uh, most frequently used words and stuff? You mean something like that? So word clustering, word or phrase clustering even, because there's fra certainly phrases that get used quite often as well. Definitely possible. 
That's quite an interesting one. These are basically, so the, the three key things I was thinking about were this, but they don't, those don't need to be the things, um, those don't need to be the things that, that come out in the end, like that we'd actually develop, I don't know. <clears throat> Since raid calls are a thing, if you see the streamer say a raid call, get all the people who say the thing similar to the raid call and then put those users together. Like what you don't. <laughs> And perform additional analytics on that group. Mm hmm Yeah. So, like, people who, who chant the raid call, are they more engaged in chat than people who didn't utter the raid call of what you don't? That will be our raid call today. Oh, I thought this was a Kiboga stream. <laughs> Everybody says that. We have very different content, but we have similar goals. Education. It's actually a good cue. Good cue to take them off. I think they've been on for about five minutes. It's the aviators. I, I know, Toe. I, I'm aware. Thank you. <laughs> um, how's the delay, by the way? Is it uh, as significant as before? It should be a little bit better now. So then, after I got help from Finite setting up Tau, I got information from Brandon that Brandon actually is running Tau already in a Node.js app. So if you're not aware, I started programming this in Node.js. Video is a hair choppy. Other than that, everything is fine. Okay. Thank you, Toe. Um, so I started doing everything in, um, in Node.js. And actually, it, it, it worked out pretty well. Um, essentially, I made a, a request uh, using Axios, which Verola you might actually recognize. Um, using Axios, made a request to... Um, I have to... Sorry, I have to comment this stuff out. I was playing around with stuff, as usual. As you do. Um, where's this thingy? Uh, block comment. So there's this here. I think I deleted something by mistake. Yeah, const. So if we do um, cd now node app.js. So basically, oh, what happened here? Oh, I didn't run tau yet. Sorry. I have to actually get tau up and running. How do we do that? I can't remember now. How do we start Tau? Uh, it was Docker. Yeah, Docker. Docker compose up. What? Okay. So this will get Tau up and running. Uh, Panda says, how about relative strength metrics? Like what's the user fall off relative to the other raids of the same size from your historical? So that is an interesting question. So there's something I wanted to mention. Uh, let me just resize this, please. Okay, everything is ready. Oh, you know what? I should have done this in, hold on a second. It's super annoying. Um, it's easier to do this in a terminal window and then just minimize it, actually. So it's interesting about historical data because I hadn't planned to actually keep historical data. Panda. The reason for that being, I think there's a terms of service problem with Twitch. It's something I need to look into into more detail, probably off stream because it probably involves reading a lot. Essentially, what I'm concerned about is that restoring Twitch's data, in particular data about users in your stream for more than a certain period of time could be a, ret a problem in terms of retention, data retention. And so I'm a little bit hesitant to do historical analysis stuff. That being said, 
what we could do, of course, is have information. Okay, we'll keep that. So have information about what the previous raids were like and store that aggregated piece of information. Yes, anonymize and aggregate, exactly. So it wouldn't be user-based anymore, but it would be just aggregate level. That's something that could possibly come later. Um, again, something issue, something wrong. What went, what went wrong here? This is very odd and very hard to read. A request code. Oh, socket hang up. What's that even mean? Hmm. That's odd. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it was just it was just a timing thing. So let me show you what I get now. So basically this request call, what it does is I create a I have an instance that I that I create with Axios. Um, I do the authorization. The authorization is passed through from the token for Tau. So Tau gives you one token in the user interface, and that's the that's the token you then use. Um, I'm purposely not displaying it on here, but if you go to um, if you go to Tau's thing, which is localhost 8000. Sorry for the 90,000 lumens. Excuse me. I think I have. There we go. So if you have, um, you can go here, you can go to show auth token and Tau will give you the auth token that you use for Tau. I've stored that in my uh, .env file config, which is uh, the, the, you know, the standard uh, thing that you can use for environment variables. And then I went and uh, just, I saved my broadcaster ID because I don't want to keep typing it in. And I just did a sample, um, a sample request to the user's endpoint through Tau. You can see the uh, first part of the API here is localhost 8000, and I get, I'm I'm getting all the followers of my channel using two ID. Otherwise, it would be from ID, right? It would be the other way around. 90 million lumens. Yes, exactly. Uh, stream lens. That's that's the the. The most promising name, because it's the most serious one, um, was Streamlens, or was it? Which had, which have the tagline "Shining 90 million lumens on your stream performance." That would be the tagline. Obviously, there's no marketing website yet. Anyway, so uh, create this instance, and then I just do a get with uh, for the instance, and. Finite was helping me out with this with this for loop where we would have to basically iterate. Uh, we have to go basically through the row of all the data that we get from Twitch, and we just put it out into the into the console. And as you can see here, basically get all the follower information, right? So for example, Oli, you were the last follow, and I have a uh, an ID for your user, and then I have the username. And then I have the timestamp of when that occurred. And the timestamp is very important. The timestamp will be the key to this entire puzzle because the timestamp is how we're going to construct a timeline for the entire project. For in the, everything that's happening in the stream, we basically, as soon as you start streaming, it will create this kind of window of everything in that timeline. Skip stream lens, just call it 90 million lumens. <laughs> I'm not just a number. No, you're not, Ollie. Definitely not. You're definitely more than a number. Everyone here is more than a number. Panda, Jay Walter, Female Coder, White Panther, Finite, Mark LT1. You're all more. 90 million lumens.com. Is it actually. Like, is it actually available? I guess it's available because no one what okay I need to look something up okay we need to look out we need to look up something one lumen in what because I don't actually know what kind of power that is is that even a thing uh 
Because actually, loot. Is there even a way to do this? I feel like it's a different thing. Because lumens are... Ugh, go away. Ads are brighter than the page. How can to convert luminous flux in lumens to electric power? You can calculate watts from lumens. Watts are a measure of heat. Lumens are a measure of light. Watts is power. Ah, okay, so... How bright, bright is one lumen? A lumen is a unit that describes the amount of light provided over a given area. Each lumen is about equal to the light output of a single candle. Oh god, 90 million lumens is a lot. How bright is 90 million lumen? No one's ever Googled this before? Oh, there's a video of 90 million lumens. <laughs> oh, wait, that's 90,000. That's 90,000 lumens. Oh, okay. Yeah, so light mode is definitely 90,000. 90 million lumens. Okay. I digress. So essentially... My plan, buy a thousand of those and record your own video. <laughs> I'm not buying a thousand, ninety thousand lumen flashlights. Unless we raise money for it on stream. There's no way I'm going to spend money buying a thousand of those. I think it's quite expensive as well. Um, it sounds like a dead mouse song. Similar. So here's my plan, chat. And everyone who's a developer... I apologize in advance because it's probably a terrible, terrible idea. My idea is to do one feature, build one feature end to end and make sure that it works. So basically get data from the API, from Tau, like for example, with the followers, take this data, write it into Postgres, do the Postgres stuff the analytics prowess part do that shizzle then build a front end that uses that data from postgres and makes it look pretty on on a in a browser window and only then when that is all done start developing the other features by 90 million candles <laughs> okay so let's let's do the pricing okay Ikea candles. There's, you know those uh, tiny little Teelicht? I don't know what they're called in English, actually. Um, no judgment from my side. Well, what, what, what do you think of that approach, chat? I'm not a developer, but that's how I think it could work. Okay, these are tea lights in metal cup. A hundred pack is two francs 85 burning time four hours um no not not the not the tea lights idea the idea of um just engineering one feature and tend panda says i don't mind that approach works for keeping you focused as a single dev i mean i'm doing this in my spare time obviously i'm not doing this like I'm not doing this for money or something as a job. That would be crazy. I already have a startup. Actually. I already have a startup, so... Don't yet. <laughs> Someone pay me to, to do this. No, I've already stated that I want to release it open source and keep it free. So I, I'm not going to make money from this. I have no intention of doing that. Okay, so a hundred lights are two francs eighty-five. So for ninety million oh, lights, nice. Thank you, Panda, for the sixty-nine bits. I'm your employer now. <laughs> You've just paid me 0.69 Amazon Bezos dollars to develop this uh, stream extension for you. We hadn't even haggled yet. So 90 million, let me just get this right. One, two, three, one, two, three. 
divided by... We would need to buy 900,000 packs of these lights, which would cost us 2.5 million Swiss francs. Next stream goal, 2.5 million donation for tea lights. <laughs> I think you can get a bulk discount if you order that many. Yeah, probably. Probably. Uh, why, why WTF? Steffi? Panda landed. Nobody else did, but 90 million for one mil. That would be a sweet deal. The, the next issue we get to is they have a burn time of four hours. Are you able to, are you able to actually light 90 million candles in the space of four hours? We'd have to probably make it a project with someone like Mark Rober because he would come up, he would come up with a solution of how to ignite like a hundred thousand candles at once or something like the whole dominoes thing where they place like what was it? 6,400 dominoes at once? I don't know. With a flamethrower. <laughs> it does sound like a Mark Rober project, doesn't it? Nice land, Jay Walter. That's uh... 80 is solid. <laughs> That's a candle, isn't it? <laughs> That's super. That's great. Or a Mr. Beast project. No, but who's getting the money? That's the thing. Mr. BC, someone always gets the money. Who's who's he buying the candles from? Hmm. Beldorf! Sorry, I keep doing that now. I probably shouldn't do that. Hey, Alan. Do you know someone named Michael? Does anyone know? Is anyone here named Michael? I don't want to dox you. It's just, you know. It would be funny. Anyhow, so I think I can make this one font size smaller. Um, I, I I understand that this is imperfect. Like I've built the Node.js app within the Tau, <laughs> within the whole Tau thing. I actually built my my Node.js app. Um, <laughs> Whoever blows up most candles wins ninety million dollars. <laughs> That's a good one. Perfect demonstration of separation of concerns. Yeah, I shouldn't have built the Node.js app in the Tau thing, but I had an issue. The issue was I had no way of getting the token. Okay, in theory, in theory, I could build the Node.js app and then just fill the token in manually, but that's not how I actually want to do it. Like, I want to have code that fetches the token from Tau and puts it in here so that you can use it programmatically. For the moment, I just copied it into an environment variable. Because that's, that's hacks. But... Uh, Today's objective, let's talk about today, because I don't have a lot of time today. I'm actually leaving for France tomorrow. I'm going to the racetrack with my motorbike again for the first time this year. I haven't been since last year, and I'm quite hyped, if you haven't noticed. Like, there's a lot of energy. You could set up an API to change your environment variables. This is true. This is true. It's beyond my current scope of knowledge, but this is definitely true. Uh, so essentially, I would like to figure out today if I can actually write stuff to Postgres. So I don't really know the first thing about doing that, but I know that there is a Node.js module um, Node.js Postgres. There's actually a Node.js module that allows you to write stuff to Postgres. Called Node Postgres. And I think I already installed this. npm install pg. <laughs> uh... 
new major version of npm available. Do I want to do this? 614.6 to 721. Do I want to actually bump that? Just out of curiosity, how much do you like struggling through stuff yourself for learning's sake? Mm. Difficult question, Panda. I think that... Oh, I see. Like, should I give you pointers or let you struggle? Um, so, the, the amount of backseating... I should have like a little uh, toggle on my screen that I can just toggle the backseat. So I'm helpful for tips and helpful for, let's say, guidance about what I'm doing. But I think it's awful if someone writes all the code in chat. Let's put it that way. But struggling is struggling is good. A certain amount of struggle is good. Like if you see that I'm really stuck on something and it's just not working, then say something. Obviously, if you see typos, point them out. Like that kind of level, I guess. But I appreciate you asking, Panda. I appreciate you asking. A lot of people don't ask. Um, I actually didn't put backseating allowed on this stream as a tag. I probably should have, but... Eh, you win some, you lose some. Just do it. Do I have a meme for this? No, I don't. But I have this one. Oh. Or... Or... Hmm. Roll Tide. What's Roll Tide? Is that like a millennial thing, Alan? Never upgrade on stream. No, I don't plan to upgrade on stream. I was just wondering if someone would do it. I wouldn't do it. Okay, so writing Postgres. This could be actually kind of cool. So there is already a Postgres database in uh, Tau. So basically, I could just create another DB for our purposes. It's what Alabama folks say for like, hell yeah. Really? Roll Tide? I had no idea. I'd never in my life heard that expression. That's really cool. Very cool. All right, so this is basically the easiest way to connect to a Postgres client. Just Alabama things, yeah, exactly. So Sorry. So I know a lot about SQL, but I actually don't know so much about putting things into a database like inserts yeah i know what insert is but anyway so i have this pg thing so technically technically we could put things into postgres so i'm actually just gonna comment this instance bit out for the moment toggle block comment now when i run um node app.js it shouldn't really do anything oh does it still interesting why does it... Oh, because I didn't save, probably. Yeah, so it doesn't do anything right now, which is fine. Um, it's a University of Alabama thing specifically because their team is called the Crimson Tide. Wow, Panda. I'm very impressed. Did you Google? Did you use the Googles? Or did you know that? It's very impressive if you knew that. Turbo drop. Hey, noob, good land. When the memes become a thing. I googled a long time ago. <laughs> That's good. Jay Walter, that looking, looking promising. I think it's a bit short, though. Oh, yep, yeah, short. Steffi, overshot. Sorry. Noobs also never heard that. It never came to Germany. It also hasn't landed in Switzerland. So, 
Anyhow, so this is the simplest way to connect query and disconnect with async await. So that is essentially what we're going to try and do. There is a Postgres database, so we should be able to access it. So let's see. Um, I don't need so much width. I'll probably go, yeah. Just so I can have this here. What we could also do is peek into Brandon's code and see Angular Nest.js. Interesting. Uh, we could peek into Brandon's code and see if there's a thing here about uh, Twitch overlays. Mm. I don't care about the overlays so much. Package JSON. I don't know if he's writing anything into... Um, he might not be writing anything into a database. Hmm. Probably not. You can actually use the term a bunch of ways. At some point you can check out this ESPN commercial about it. Hey, TD, you're back from lurking. This is a small browser indeed. We can make it a bit bigger. How about like that? Is that better? All right, so the idea would be to connect to the Postgres instance that is already running in Docker. The real question is, will I, will I manage to do this? Because I really don't know if I know how to do this. So obviously there's this client and then it creates a client, but how does it know what the credentials are for Postgres? That's what I'm wondering. That's what I don't really understand. How is it getting credentials? Well, let's look into connecting. So there's a pool uses environment variables. Ah, we already have environment variables. Let me just blur this so you don't see that. So there is a Postgres thing here. Need more real estate for streaming? <laughs> I'm tempted to take my my partner's 34 inch monitor and put it above put it above my uh, my screen. That's a cool blur. This is how I'm doing it. If you'd like to know, it's actually not that difficult to do. So there is a Postgres password here in the environment variables. So probably, probably this should work, but how does it know where, like, how does it know where it's selecting something from? This is the thing. So if I, if I have this here, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. If I just run this, it just tells me await is only valid in an async function. So I don't really understand what it's trying to do. This is the thing. I don't really understand, like, oh, okay. So we need to actually have this somewhere. Ah. Wrap what you're doing in an async function. So like the examples I give you don't show the function wrapper. Yeah, I've noticed that. Why don't they do that? It's a bit strange. Is that strange? I find that a bit odd. To run the above program, specify which database we can invoke it like so. Hmm. What are we building this in? Node.js for now. Who knows what will happen later. Top level await is probably not on your current node version added. It pretty, it's pretty new. What's a top level await? So you have to remember, I'm completely noob to this. Like these async await function stuff. That's fairly new for me. Like I understand functions and like how they in general work, but the async await stuff is, is completely new to me. So if I have, if I need to wrap this whole thing, 
normally I would do something like how would I do this wrap a function with async call that function what you're currently using is top level await any front end framework or not at the moment yeah we're not even we're not even close to front end yet td <laughs> we are so so far away from front end like we could not be further away um wrap it with function wow. with async call that function nimi b thank you very much for following i hope you're enjoying the stream say hello would be nice to hear from you Okay, so I would do like, if I want to wrap this whole thing in a function, it would be like, you know, basically like this, no? Or is this wrong? That's my thinking anyway. And I would have to obviously, if I need to pass some stuff, then... And then I would call the function here below. Async await. Something like that. You can just do async your stuff here if you want to do a simple anonymous non-rejecting. Yeah, so if I do like that. And then just call async down here, right? I guess. Unexpected token. Ah, yeah, you need, uh, yeah, you need the assignment. Sorry. That's my bad. That's my bad. Async is not defined. <laughs> We're creating a new language. Maddie script. Fine. I'm going to call this Maddie script just because you all said so. Okay, does that make you happy now, chat? Malformed arrow function parameter list. <laughs> Why is this an... Why is this a problem? Maybe we should do an FCC run before. No! Hi, Nimby. Nimby B, sorry. Thanks for uh, popping in. I'm trying to learn to develop, even though I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Swiss German script, like Vienna script. Vienna script. <laughs> Sausage script. Sausage script. If you want to do named, you would do const. Aha, right. Of course, I need to name it. But it doesn't need the... It doesn't need that like this then of course i want my function to be named maddie script all right so connection refused that's very good it's tried to connect to 127.0015432 and that's very good that means it's tried to connect to postgres's port eat racing maddie two shoes my girlfriend wanted to say hi oh that's so sweet. <laughs> That's very sweet. Uh, Venus script, in case you didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I know there's... A... Also, I need... Very cute. Very, very cute. I'm always glad if uh, partners join streams. I think that's very cool. It says a lot about a person if they're willing to watch something they literally don't understand. So if I watch my own stuff, it also counts because I don't understand what I'm doing. You see? So it's trying to connect to Postgres. Where am I putting these? Probably in the environments file. Time to blur again. All right, so 
let's do like this. PG host. Uh, yeah, local host. But it's in Docker. I wonder if that's a problem. Hey, yeah, that's nice. I could also do it directly through the thing, but I, I don't want to expose my, my stuff. If you scroll down, the programmatic section has better examples. I've never connected via pools, so I don't know what advantages it gives. I don't think it's a big issue in this case. It's anyway going to be a separate DB, but... Um... Mm -mm 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 not to pass configs yeah so essentially it's still blurred right yeah it's totally blurred um i want to put in okay so localhost and then but where is where is it putting this stuff pg user uh so i need to actually make these things database password hmm let me okay let me see something here let's before we put this in the environments file okay before we put that in there let's just try Let's just try to use a pool. Um, here's our same script from above. Modified use programmatic values. This can be used if your application already has a way to manage config values. Yeah, so like this. So if I do... Okay, let's do... Um, const pool equals new pool. Um, user, I guess we're going to have to find out from Tao how these are set up because I actually don't know what these are. I think it's localhost. I, I don't know what the database is called either. I'm going to have to look in the Tao stuff about how this is actually set up. Unless Finite's here. Finite, are you watching? I figure... He probably would have said hello. Um, password. And then port is 5432 is for Postgres. So let's assume for the moment that my user. Okay, the password is coming from here. Can I just put in that like this? I don't remember. Process env, yeah. Because we have this uh, env added. Is he on or prepping for a vacation? Say Tau three times. Tau, Tau, Tau. Oh wait, I sorry, I need to do that properly. Tau, Tau, Tau. Something happened. Did you hear that chat? What happens if you say people's names multiple times? Like if I say White Panther, White Panther, White Panther. Oh, oh that's interesting. Hmm. T Drayson, T Drayson, T Drayson. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> oh, bunny cam, bunny cam, bunny cam. You have to do it in the dark in front of a mirror. I ain't saying Candyman three times. Good try, Alan. Hey, no, 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 no. That's not happening. Okay, let's uh, let's get Bunny Cam up and running. We of course need to make sure that uh, partner is not in view. What won't you say? Mm-hmm, Alan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's not gonna happen. You know why it's not gonna happen? I've got balls of steel. 
exactly. That's why. Okay, so it's a little bit dark in the bunny room. Give me one moment. as sorry it was a mute all right so it's not as dark anymore i should be able to give me a second here what do the containers behind you contain it's <laughs> a very good question isn't it they are containers um 50 percent electronics and cables and 50 percent total miscellaneous stuff like memory boxes with birthday cards and stuff like that they contain dockers nicely composed <laughs> let me see if i can get this up for uh, for td because he does want that bunny cam hey you i mean chat you paid good money for it you paid 100k so it's i understand uh it's gonna be up here Hey, that's a bit big. Oof. Probably should reduce that size a little bit. That is uh, quite large. Holy moly. There we go. Hey, who cares about browser stuff? We can just show the bunny cam all day. There we go. So mark is complete. Feels bunny man. Oops, wrong chat. <laughs> is that a tiny couch or a giant bunny? That's for you to decide. Panda. What's your guess? If you had to guess. <laughs> Noob, I like your answer though. A good answer all right so essentially i'm gonna say giant bunny yes so her name is fiona she is seven kilos so she's relatively large i would say um she's currently ch chilling i would say it's a big dog in a bunny suit <laughs> She's very dog-like, actually. She's quite dog-like. You can, um, you know, pet her and stuff. Your bunny got a new hutch today. Oh, that's great, TD. I had no idea you had bunnies. M things make a lot more sense now. All right, so what I'd like to do is... I had no idea bunnies got that big. Yeah, she's, she's actually... Um, Okay, she's definitely on the larger side of bunnies, but there are there are bigger bunnies than her as well. But she's definitely um, her her breed is the largest. You have two bunnies, TD. You do have to share share photos in Discord. I'd love to see them. And if anyone else wants to see bunny pictures, you can join our Discord. So here's my idea: if I can figure out from Tao what these are configured as then I should be able to... Yeah, I should be able to connect to the Postgres server. And so let's see, 5432. Um, I think we need to put this as a number. Okay, and then what? Oh, we have to do a require thing, don't we? Yeah, we do. Okay, so we do our const up here. Const. Um, pool client. Require. 
RPG. Oh, we don't need a semicolon there? Interesting. All right, you're off bunny hunting. Oh, damn, for photos, nothing else. <laughs> yeah, that sounded a bit... That, that sounded a bit dodgy, TD. Okay, so we've got that. So then there's the pool, which I've got. Then I have a query. Let's get rid of this because we don't need this right now. Um, so pool dot query. And then we do, I don't know, select now. That will tell us if we actually have access. That's quite clever. Um, error. I suppose we could just actually copy this part. JavaScript semicolons are optional, but you should stay consistent within the file. Yeah, so I would typically put one here um, after the const. Wow, there's so much lag in VS Code. That's weird. Is that weird? I find that weird. Um, so let's put that there. Pool, new pool, user host, database, blah, blah, blah. That's a const. I should make another semicolon here. Um, we can just copy that from there. That gets another semicolon. <laughs> okay. So if I do this, this way, VS Code is an Electron app after all. Yeah, is Electron like known for kind of high memory usage or something? I also, I mean, I also have like VLC running now with the webcam on it and stuff. So I love how she's just chilling on the couch. It's amazing. I have an app that converts websites into Mac apps, but doesn't use Electron. So it's really performant. Electron is essentially Chrome. Ah, oh, wasn't it like, was it like an early fork or something like that? I do remember something like this. Am I going to be using SQL? Uh, yeah, to do all my cool stuff um, in the database, I'm definitely going to be using SQL. That's one of the main reasons why this project is exciting for me. You're running an instance of Chrome <laughs> and running Electron. But okay, CPU, I have plenty of CPU to go around. That's not the issue. I've got eight cores physically, which is like 16 virtual. So that's not so much an issue. But there are like these jumps. Like when I'm scrolling, sometimes there's like a jump. Okay, what happens if I just run this now? I'm just curious. Okay, let's try it. Fun. What just happened? Is this like a... Why does this keep repeating? Looks good, ship it. <laughs> what? What just happened there? Oh, there we go. Connection refused. Okay. Uh, that could be because we didn't specify a database. Is it time to YOLO deploy? Not yet. Um, just because you have them doesn't mean you should be using them all when they're not needed. Spotify, Discord, Slack, VS Code, all Electron. Mm. Yeah, Discord in particular is pretty bad. Slack as well. I, I close... I close them out completely when I'm streaming. It's just, uh... Maddie who 69 names. Whoa, we've hit 69! Uh, nice. Very, very nice. Congratulations, chat. Disable GPU acceleration. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we have to figure out what the credentials are for the Postgres database for Tau. So let's have a look. Maybe there's something here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Tau settings. Hmm. These are just the API endpoint things. 
Mm -mm 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 -mm. DB name OS get environment Postgres DB Postgres blah 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 from their docs. But Panda, where is that coming from? From whose docs? Oh, from oh, you got it from the oh, you got it from oh, okay. From Tao's own uh, things. Awesome. You are a lifesaver. I was just about to go into there and go get it. Um, so this is great. Awesome. So what we can do is just take the stuff. And put it there where we need to so it's the db name is db name is os.get environment postgres user postgres i guess it's just yeah that's just python yeah um So DB name is Postgres, user is Postgres. Is that right? Is that possible? I guess it's possible, that's what I did. Password, I have. And the host is DB. Well, that's the Django, that's the Django one. Hmm. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to comment it out. So I'll go block. Let's uh let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Connection refused. It might also be Could it be a problem of cross cross instance? Mm. No, probably not. Hmm. What happened to the music? Oh, it's just the end of the track. Um, okay. Collection refused. Connection refused. Hmm. But the host would not be called DB, would it? It seems a bit... Hmm, error not found. Okay, so local host. It's the same, okay, so connection refused. Host name 127.0015432. It's running within Docker, is that maybe an issue? Can you check whether those environment variables are available? Uh, these are. Let me just, uh, one sec, let me just blur this out. Um, okay, so Postgres password and Django DB exist, but not the other ones. There, so there's Postgres DB, Postgres user, Postgres password, and Django DB host. But um, only the Postgres password is in the environment file. Maybe read the ones that exist from the ENV. Uh, well, I'm reading. I'm reading the Postgres password from the environment file. Um, let me see something here. You found this in Wait for Postgres. So that's the SQL one. Postgres, Postgres, password, DB. So this is what you found before, Panda. Use the defaults for the others. Yeah, that's what I'm actually doing is that Postgres, localhost, Postgres, and then I'm using the password from the ENV file. 
and then the port. And that doesn't seem to be working. I get connection refused. Ah, but wait, 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 wait. I remember something. When a Postgres container is initialized on Mac, it has a different localhost address. I thought it was like Docker or Mac. What was this again? Hold on a second. Docker for Mac localhost. There was, ah, yes, this one. It has a different localhost address. It's docker for Mac.localhost. Okay, so let's try that again. Oh, interesting. E not found. So it doesn't know it doesn't know the address? Okay, so that's not the issue then. Okay. Hmm. How could I find out? Is the port correct? Um, Postgres default port it is 5432 it's well okay technically they could have changed it um, where would they have changed it that's the question um, maybe in setup or something let me just blur this I don't want to show something that I shouldn't uh, wait for Postgres Yeah, she's on the sofa. Normally she's not. Uh, although at this at this time, it's just quarter to 11. Normally she's on the sofa at this time. Uh, okay, so port wise. That's the config for... There's no port things from here. Doesn't seem like the port got changed anywhere hmm pg is ready host user password db name ah. mm -hmm. so i can show you this so i this is when Postgres initially gets set up in the um, in the Docker container, and it creates my user, and then it creates the database, and then here Postgres is ready. I've seen that before on the start of Tau. So Postgres definitely exists. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's running just fine. That means that the default port is, is being used because it wasn't changed anywhere in there. So it would be 5432. Maybe it's just a... Hold on, let me try something. Maybe it's just a syntax thing. Port 5432. Connection refused. Hmm... Ah, hold on a second. Maybe I put in my user and that's what it's using. Connection refused. Hmm. This is tricky. I don't want to create another Postgres database because it's not necessary, you know? DB password, check timeout, os.getenv. Is this in a different environment file? Because there's already a environment file here. But is there a... Hmm. 
config core. I wonder if there's another environment file in here. Streamers, templates, which users. Hmm. Can you p-school from within the docker terminal? Oh, that's an idea. Uh, we could try that. Don't know what performance will be like, but we can try. Mm, very good suggestion. So here's the Postgres TV. Oh, maybe because it's running within a container, that could be. All right, so we're in the container. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I'm not really familiar with command line Postgres. That's what's that's what's a bit of the issue. So it is there, but would it be uh i have to look up the syntax for there we go um postgres d h what would the host be local host port is five four three two user is postgres uh question is what's the password oh there is no password i'm in right Right? Uh... I guess I'm in, no? So it's just... Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe there's no password. Maybe it was just a password to set up the DB and nothing else. Okay, hold on. Connection refused. Postgres localhost Postgres no password. Hmm. I mean, to me, it looked like I'm in. Oh, right, because you have to semicolon after each statement. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> that's... It's a blocked port on the Docker side. Yeah, okay. Okay. Because, yeah, it's here. How to expose the port? Mm hmm. Expose Postgres port Docker. That seems like the issue. Da, da, da. Connect to the Docker instance, blah, blah, blah. 
Update 2, blah, blah, blah. Why, why, why? The solution was the order of props. Oh, wow. But that's... Interesting. It should be exposed in, Dao in Tao's Docker Compose file already. It seems it's not because I can I can access it here without the password. Like, where was it? PSQL Postgres localhost five four three two user Postgres. Oh yeah, Jay Walter, you worked with Tao before, exactly. Um, in Docker Compose. Where is the Postgres thingamajiggy? DB image restart Redis volumes. Postgres data is in Postgres data. Postgres Alpine. Port 8000, 8000. Du, 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 du. Postgres password. It's not exposed. Add expose 5432. Where do I add that though? Um, in the Docker file or in Docker Compose? You have to be very specific now, chat, because I don't know a lot about editing the Docker files. Because there's a Docker file, but it would be in the Docker Compose that I should ed edit this, right? Docker file. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Just add ports five four three two five four three two, but. Okay, hold on a second, because it has to be in the right place. Ah, it's going to be here, isn't it? Docs.docker compose, compose file. It's going to be here, isn't it? It's going to be basically this, like that, and then it's going to be 5432. It's going to be 5432. But on the DB service, ah, right, uh, which would be this one below, right? <laughs> There's even a comment here. <laughs> Add forward ports five four three two to dev container dot JSON to forward Postgres locally. Adding ports property to this file will not forward from a code space. What? That won't work? Okay, so we need to add this into the dev container.json. Where is that? Oh, okay, it's some special thing. Okay, fine. That's, not, that's very confusing. That was quite confusing. Um, okay, so this should work, right? Like this. But I need to I need to shut down Docker and run it again, right? Most probably. I also always get this error, which I don't know why. Port variable is not specified on the DB service. Oh, do I need to do both? Ah, I see. That's the variable thing. Right. Okay, that makes sense. 
that makes sense. I actually probably have that in my local uh, Postgres thing. Do I need... I don't need single quotes, I don't think. Let's find out. Here we go. We will see what happens. Also, I think bunny cam has been up long enough, I guess. Anyway, she's in the toilet. She should have her privacy. Most probably. I feel like she deserves privacy. All right, so blah, 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 blah. Postgres is ready. Okay. So let's see. We can get rid of this. Give her some privacy to do her business. Yeah, totally. Um, when mapping ports in the host container format, you may experience erroneous results when using a container port lower than 60 because YAML parses numbers in the format XXYY as a base 60 value. Oh, wow. Explicitly specifying your port mappings as strings. That is truly mind-blowing. For now, for our purposes... Hey, okay, now we got something. Uh, auth failed. Postgres, blah, blah, blah. Fatal. Auth C, line 331, auth failed. Okay. But the password was empty. Yeah, who uses base 60? What the... That's just crazy. The authorization failed. That's very weird. It's Postgres, localhost, Postgres. But there's no password. Or was it the actual password that we need to provide? Uh, let's try. We can try with what we had before. Uh, Postgres. I think it was that. I need to check. Hold on. Postgres underscore password. Yeah. Okay. We can... Can try like this. Hey! Oh! Oh! This looks good. Yes! This is good. So it was the Postgres password that I need. So password list only works from within the Postgres container, which makes sense. Nice. So this is the result. Oh, I did something. I actually achieved something. I connected the Postgres. Ship it. <laughs> That's a very nice emo panda. That's a really great emo. Where's that from? Seenot Bush. I don't know that, that streamer. Okay, so that's great. Nice. Okay, so now comes the fun part. Basically, he's a sculptor. Interesting. Jay Walter, thank you for the salty bits. The first Twitch creative partner. Wow, that's amazing. Awesome. So now, basically, if I have this connection thing, and I have a pool query, I could technically start inserting stuff into the database. <laughs> but that's where we need to be careful, because we actually need to create another DB. Now, what we have to test is whether the DB stays after restart. Because I don't know if it does. Drop all tables to make sure you don't break anything. <laughs> no. No. Um, I can do a... What was it again? Uh, Postgres. Get all table. Get all databases. Ah, oh, wait. Yeah, I would have to create... Hold on. I have to create the DB first. Postgres CLI create DB. 
but it's in Docker. It should be the same thing, right? P SQL. actually it's the same thing hey weird 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 stuff weird stuff did i even need to connect to this db well okay i need to make mine now but with the same with the same credentials i need an example statement i don't want to write everything from scratch there we go uh I need to probably put an owner. Hmm. Ezekiel, welcome in. I see you're working in Python. I have a noob Windows Python question. I know nothing about Python. I'm just warning you now. Uh, so I don't know anything about Python, but someone here might be able to answer your Python question. Also, I work on Mac, so even worse, I couldn't even answer your Windows question. Sorry. It's uh, truly, truly a problem. I'm just going to create database. That's it. All right. Docker. Um, tau DB1. DLI. But do, I mean, Ezekiel, do ask your question. Because, you know, there's a chance someone else in chat or e there's a chance I know. But I'm just saying it's a very... Very unlikely. Um, do we have history? No history here. Oh. P SQL. Well, just to create database. What should we call it? That's the real question. I'm trying to get Django and Python to work on Windows. If anyone could help with that, please do. Jay Walter, do you uh, use Windows? Because to work with Tao, you might have had to get that up and running. Uh, it's also worth, uh, Ezekiel, it's worth uh, joining the Discord because someone there might be able to help you out or at least point you in the right direction. Naming things is the hard part, Panda. Definitely. Databasey McDatabase. <laughs> Wait, let's let's do data mic database. I'm gonna regret this. Oh, I have to prefix it with psql. Create database data mic database. Ah, oh, extra command line argument. Oh, wait, that needs to be in... Does it need to be in quotes? Role database does not exist. Why is this not working? Uh, okay, let's try this again. PSQL create database docker. I don't... How to easily create a Postgres database in docker. Uh, dash C for command. Create data... Interesting. There should be a create db command. Oh, it is just p sql dash c. Huh. But 
but I have to name it. In its sequel, create db data. So you just do dash c, create db data mic database face. But I need to. Instead of p sequel. Slash backseating instead of p sequel. Aha, yeah, I need the credentials to do it, right? Um, dash u Postgres. Hmm. I'm looking probably with the wrong thing. I don't think it create database. Wrap the command in quotes. Didn't like that. It would be create database, but Interesting. Let me try something. So P sequel. Roll root doesn't exist. That's interesting. Yeah. Create DB. Create DB. Let's try it like this. Create DB. Data mic data face. Could not connect to database template. Role root does not exist. Okay, and then we do dash u Postgres. Oh. So it doesn't even need the psql prefix. Hold on a second. Ah, yep, it's already there. Data McData face exists. So if we change it here to data McData face. Oh my God, is it actually that easy? Okay. It's that simple, chat. It was that simple. Create DB, data McDataface, and then specify the user, and the password is not needed because. Yeah, semicolon to terminate the statement. I did something again. Oh my gosh, that's twice today. I am on a roll. Which means. Which means that we have to do the third thing. We have to start thinking about the actual data structure. But for now, for now, oh, why did I close that? Actually, I needed that. For now, what we can do is just create a table that we can use. Uh, create table. Is it create table? Uh, create table. I don't want create table. I want in the CLI syntax. One column for keys, one column for values. Call it a day. <laughs> one thing per hour. That's way more than what I manage. 
Hmm. Create table. Let's call it. Um. Let's call it user followers dash u postgres. Oh, okay. Maybe it needs to be one command. Indeed, highly normalized. Okay. Create table. Postgres CLI. Why is it not? Boom. Boom indeed, Jay Walter. 9427 is a big boom. Why is create table not working? What kind of command is this? I need to look up something. Just going to look up create. Create table, create type, create index, create function, create schema, create role, language, table, partitioning, constraints, create database. This is very weird. Like Postgres 9.1. Create DB is a wrapper around the SQL command. Ah. So what if we look for the create table wrapper? So it doesn't disappear on Docker reinitialization. Uh, that's true. We could already test that. That's true. Uh, let's try that out. Very good point, uh, J. Walter, because... Uh, sorry, Panda. Your colors are very similar. Mixed you up. Yeah, J. Walter would have been amazing to land 100, as Steffi says. With that emote, that's, that's gold. All right, let's kill this. Docker compose down. Here's the test, whether it retains the database or not. Basically, everyone who plays the drop game has to use the 100 emote. Essentially. All right, let's go. Let's see if it's still here. It is, which makes sense because, because, look, it makes sense because there isn't a command somewhere to drop that database specifically. So we now have the data McDataface database. I could technically just do it here, actually. Why am I why am I putting myself through Docker CLI hell when I could just be doing it here? Um, create table. Um, what are we calling the table? Oh, fine, all dropping with hundreds, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to get the 100 emote. There we go. The mounting is done in Docker Compose of Tau. But I don't need to change that, you know? Like, because there's no actual database specification, is there? There's only the volumes. And we're not talking about, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's an issue. You're just showing off. That's okay. Did we already party about 300 plus followers? Oh yeah, 303, look at that. I think we had the 300th last time. I just don't know how it ships. We will ship it, that's for sure. So we're going to call the table. I'm open to suggestions, chat. I mean, really, I mean, we could call it anything at this point. Maybe we'll call it like stream burn, maybe lumens. Maybe we just call it lumens. 
No, I think I'll call it user followers. All right, what's happening now? Okay, save this. Uh-oh. Error. Syntax error at end of input. Yes, because there's no semicolon. Okay, what's the error this time? Syntax error near semicolon. Ah, wait a second. Do I need to put these in in quotes? Hmm. Mm. Maddie two stats. <clears throat> I'm very confused about the pool query. Does that does it not allow you to create a table? Let's see. There must be some other stuff here. Queries. Select now as now parameterized query. Yeah, we're going to need that, for example. Postgres does not support parameters. Okay, everybody drop 100. Let's go. Mine at least still has some possibility of hitting. Jay Walter have no chance. It's become such a thing now. Oh, this is nice. Could actually construct the query and then put the query into the. Uh... That's actually kind of nice. Hmm. Oh, Ezekiel. Okay, Panda 25 is not bad. It's pretty good, but Ezekiel coming in hot with the parrot. Ooh, might be better. Ooh, 83. Good land. Good land. Row mode. Types. Hmm. Doesn't actually say here about creating tables. PG pool. Okay, let's try node. Postgres create table just to see how to create a table without an ORM. Hmm. Creating tables, stack abuse. Creating tables with the database prepped. For data insertion, let's create our tables. Create table query. Yeah, then. Oh, I see. They just made a const. Ah, we need some columns in there. That's probably the issue. Fine. 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 I will do it your way. Okay. So the query is, what's with the back ticks? What's with the back ticks? That's strange. Why? Why is that? Hmm. It's a bit weird. Hmm. Backticks are the template literal. Let's you insert JavaScript references like variable name inside. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. Steffi did not bounce on the left wall. Rigged. Rigged indeed. 
Mm -mm -mm. Drop bunnies. <laughs> hey, Data, though. You still around? Okay, we're going to do a create table. User followers. And we know from the previous stuff that we did above, this is the follow data we get. So it makes sense. I know it's boring, but it makes sense to already put these things in here. Like from ID uh, is going to be an int. And we're going to do from login as varkar. 2ID2 two login is fine. And then I need a followed at, which is going to be timestamp. That's the last one. Oh, it's still blurred. Did I do that by mistake? Excuse me. How long has that been pixelated for? I think I hit that by mistake. Definitely my bad. Thank you for telling me. It's a good thing to read chat once in a while. So now we have the query that should create this table. You blurred it when you started to fill the query. Okay. Yeah, so I wrote user followers from ID. I just used the, uh, the data that comes from here. Where was it? the follow data because we don't need everything. We only need the user's ID that's following me and their login user, right? Technically, we don't even need that, but I think it's nice to have it because it's easier to see. So once in a while pro streamer. <laughs> yeah, gosh, that that really that's something that grinds my gears a little bit. And I don't know if other people feel that way. But when I'm in a Twitch chat in a streamer's chat, and really, like, I'm not exaggerating. It takes them like three minutes between reads. Like they're doing something and then they'll check chat again and then three minutes go by before they check chat again. I, that really, that irks me a little bit, you know? It's really a bit weird. I can understand it being in like a particular moment of focus, like occasionally that could happen, but I, I know streamers where that happens a lot. And I stopped watching them because I just found it very annoying. You do that, Panda. Oh, interesting. I've never watched your streams. Now I'm doing that too? <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. No. I mean, it's one thing, like, it's one thing to have, uh, what's it called? Like, um, it's one thing to have co-working or something, you know? Like, you do 40 minutes and you don't reach out or something. Like, I understand that. Oh, so Panda, you do rhythm games. Okay, yeah, no, this I understand. You know, like, this is something where you can't look away. Now we're only at two minutes. Yeah, sure, noob. Okay. Sure. Hmm. So rhythm games like, uh, like Beat Saber, right? Like that kind of thing. Sometimes if you have no viewers for a while, you get lost in what you're doing. You don't notice when people come in. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Like rock band guitar. I'm curious to watch that. I dropped you a follow because I'm curious to watch that. I'd like to watch that. Okay, so let's see what happens then. If, if this works, that's the third win, and then I'm taking the third win, and that's it. Okay. That might have worked. Uh, so let's call this create query now we're gonna do select query and it's gonna be 
select star from user followers. And do I need this? I do not. And so we're going to write select query here. Okay, so let's see. Looks like it worked. Data Dev, thank you for coming by. Appreciate you. You have a good one. Oh, <laughs> Panda, you've just dropped with the poop. Into the bush. 69, 79. Yeah, that was very close to 69, 69. 69 with a poop is actually a pretty good one, I have to say. Quite like that. So yes, um, that's the third win. Row count zero. You can see here fields, right? From ID, from login. Oh my god, I wrote followed that. Oh... Why? 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 There's a solution for this, of course. Follow that stream. There's a solution for this, and the solution is to open up Data Grip and edit it. You know. Which I shall not do. I'm going to do that because even if the lag now has gone to like 10 years between audio and video, I'm going to just fire up data grip and I'm going to correct it using an actual IDE for data stuff because screw VS code for doing this. Like writing SQL in here is so painful. You have no idea. This is so painful for me. Follow that stream, yo. Alter column, yeah, but I just can't be bothered to do it. It's just so much easier in here. So let's make sure that we can get the connection going. This I have to blur quickly because I don't know if it's going to open the wrong thing. It might open something that I can't show you. Oh, come on. And after this, we're going to call it a night chat because I have to get to sleep. So that I can drive safely to France tomorrow. Followed that stream. Wow, this is like maxing out my computer right now. Anyone wants to count the lag and let me know how bad the lag is? I'm curious. It's probably extremely bad right now. Raid Gak. It's been a while since we raided Gak. Is he on right now? Yeah, my 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 stuff is like dying right now. Alright, so Postgres. I don't know if this connection is actually legit. Slideshow stream. F frame rate, yeah. As I was just too much open. VS code and you know. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a different password. Hold on. Um, yeah, give me a second, because I need to make another connection here. So I'll show you. I can take this connection and then... Can I copy this? Copy data source. Duplicate. Yeet VS code. Yeah, probably. Because I guess we don't need it right now. Well, this is where it gets really interesting because I can do a lot of the stuff in here as well. Coding Garden Fan! Still lurking. So we're going to call this one 
Postgres, we're going to call this one. Um, doc, uh, what was it? Data mic data face. Your host, local host, 5432, user password, user Postgres. Database, data mic data face. And now I need to blur because I need to go get the password which is unfortunately in the file drop FPS shouldn't be so bad now should be a little bit better at least the drop game works you know be grateful you know uh, okay so let's go get this blah 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 how ENV, that's the one. Slideshow drop. Womp womp. Okay, so that is there. Postgres, let's test the connection. That's fine, say out your password out loud. Success. Connection success. It starts with P. And suddenly, chat, we find ourselves back in data grip, even in a coding stream. We somehow managed to get data grip in here, which is pretty awesome. All right, so it's introspecting the schemas. You see here, public. Tables, user followers. This is really cool. And I can write all of my SQL queries in here. At least the audio works. Passwords Hunter 2. Nope, it's not. Not this time. You see that followed dat? I can just click here, modify column. This is so much easier than doing this in VS Code. Just saying. Um, I want to name this to followed at execute. Oh, wait, I have the sound for it. See if I can time it. Here we go. Something, something hammer nails. <laughs> exactly. So there you go. That is how you rename a column in Postgres. So much easier after a 20 minute boot time. Yeah, of course. No, the, the, the thing is, right, that now, right, if I have the data in here, if I would start sh inserting the data into there, which I can do next time, I'm not gonna do that today. If we, if we write the code that inserts the data into here, I can start writing my query to do some cool stuff with that data. That's the point. And then once I have that query, I can somehow execute that query in as part of the front end application. So that's the point where it's going to be front end, the back end stuff. And that's where the front end part will start, because then I need to understand how to link that up. Let's see. That's what I need to know. Anyway, so. Chat. It's been lovely. But I think it's time to go consider raiding Gakaroonies. We just have to make sure that... Uh, we just have to make sure everything is uh, down. Think of the pain you put your potato computer through. Funnily enough, it's not a potato. That's, that's the sad part. It's a freaking $4,000 MacBook in the end. But, uh, well... The pain is real. If we quit Docker, things should improve significantly. D running Docker is just a problem, right? It allocates a lot of memory. Password is Postgres to the user Postgres. No, it's not. Twitch TV slash GAC BL. And he's on mute. Don't spoil the raid. If you spoil the raid, I will ban you. Peace out, Ezekiel, but stay for the raid. 
Uh, do stay for the raid so we can support Gak. Um, definitely very important to support our fellow science and tech streamers. This is real dev work, okay? What he's doing. It becomes a potato when you stream. It does. It's true. So if you haven't been here for end of stream, then uh, you get to have some fun now. Because it's the first time you get to see what's happening at the end of the stream. Um, this is where I say thank you to everyone. Even if there is a little bit of lag. Um, thank you everyone for your amazing support today. That was really cool. That was a really, really good session. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, we did three things. Four if we count the redo. Yeah, an altered table was pretty impressive. Uh, you can't drop on this uh, scene, J. Walter. Unfortunately. It's just the way it is. Can't drop on this one. So thanks to Nimibi, it's me, Ollie, Panda, Oop, Pums, a female coder, and Maddie2bot for the follows. Thank you to J. Walter, Panda, Ian, and White Panther for the bitties. Much appreciated. Um, if you don't know already, we're going to raid uh, Gak, obviously. Um, I hope you enjoy um, your time at Gak's place. He is a wonderful streamer. Please show him the love that you have shown me today as always and unfortunately Monday there will be no stream because I am in France still so uh, we'll be seeing each other next week Friday I hope you'll be there um, yeah that's it that's it um, we are getting ready to raid Gak it says that we're almost ready. Things are definitely slower today than normal. I apologize for that. And I appreciate that you stick around despite all of the audio video issues. Your drop definitely would have been a hundred. Why is the raid so slow to pick up? I can't click the, uh, Oh, there is a timeout, right? There's a timeout. I should have started it a little bit earlier. That's that's my bad. Thank you, Gmanush, for the follow. We are about to head over to Gak. IRL stream from France. Yeah, I, I wish the internet was good enough for that. Bye, everyone. Come on.